Well, good morning, and uh, we're going to continue our study here in Judges chapter 12, and um, we're going to be looking at Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon, but before we begin, could you join me in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this time we have this morning to open your word together. We ask for your divine enlightenment, that your Holy Spirit can speak to us, the same spirit that inspired the scriptures can give us wisdom and understanding for the present day. We pray for each of those who are searching for truth, and those involved in these studies. And we pray for those in this movement who have uh, studied other things and uh, that you are also leading. We just pray, Lord, that we can all come together to share the things that you have showed us. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. So everyone, um, if you remember, yesterday we had finished off Jephthah. And um, we're, we're actually going to come back at some point to some of the things that we found. Now, there was a lot of uh, numerical detail in the story of Jephthah. And we could go through it in these studies, but um, I don't think it's necessary, at least from my perspective. I mean, we have a record of it and we're gonna be putting it in the document that we have on Judges. Um, but uh, yeah, at least in my estimation, it's just a lot of detail that is not main arguments, but they are interesting. And one of the things we saw in Jephthah was that that way mark demonstrates the symbolic use of dates. Now, I mean, more than any other one. And it's, it's the way mark that marks when this movement rejected the symbolic use of dates. Now, um, this way mark in the line of the judges, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon, is the empowerment of the second angel. So it's December 25th, 2021, on the line of the judges. And of course, we know uh, that way mark is extremely important um, for a number of reasons. So first, it's the end of the 777 structure. It's the 20th day of the ninth month, which is the confession and repentance uh, in Ezra chapter 10. Um, where they confess their marriage to their strange wives and they set up uh, a period of divorcement that's going to happen from the, 20th day, uh, from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month, so a period of 88 days. So it's fairly important uh, in understanding our lines. Um, it could also be represented as three months, which is 90 days, and so we have that... Uh, in, in the line of Jephthah um, as well, because the line of Jephthah is going to lead us uh, to that uh, to December 6, 2020. But um, it still relates to what's happening. So, so we'll see here that when we look at this line of Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon, this is going to be the December 25th, 2021 date. And um, so it's just the next thing that follows. It's logical. Now we have three judges here, not a lot of information. There's nothing about any battles. There's nothing about any of their activities. Um, we have this... Uh, period of time that they were judges, so that becomes significant. Um, but and, and even with Elon, we have less. So at least with Ibzan, we have how many sons he had, how many daughters, and uh, the fact that he sent his daughters abroad and he found uh, wives for his sons, for his 30 sons. And he judged Israel seven years, right? And then he's going to die and be buried, right? So they're going to tell us that he died and where he was buried. 
And then Elon, uh, he's a Zebulonite, which means he's of the tribe of Zebulun. And he's going to judge Israel 10 years. So nothing about any of his sons, nothing of note about him. I mean, he's buried in Agilon in the country of Zebulun. And then we're just going to have um, Abdon after him. So, so we don't really have too much. We have very little about Elon. So he's going to be the second angel's message. It's going to be difficult to figure out what he represents and how we're going to give dates uh, based on, on him. So, so we're going to see how that that relates. Uh, and then we're going to have, uh, you know, of course, Abdon after him. He's the son of Hillel, a Peri Perithonite. Um, now, he has 40 sons and 30 nephews, right? And they have 70 ascolts. And he judges Israel for eight years. Right, so... You know, it gives us these numbers, so they're obviously symbols that we need to understand. Um, you know, the part of the problem that people have with what we're doing, so we're taking these, I mean, this would be probably one of the most insignificant sections in the Bible. Very few people would know anything about Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. Very few people would ever reference them because uh, we don't know anything that they really did. All we have are these numbers attached to them. And, and so most people would just say, well, why is it even in the Bible? I mean, I mean, obviously they have to fill in that period of time of the judges. So, you know, that's probably why it's there. And so we need to know, you know, we've got this period of seven years, 10 years and eight years. And so we can add that up. You know, we're going to have, 25 years. So, so now we know something about the chronology. But, but it doesn't really tell us too much. Right? Um, so they're, they're using a lot of, they could have said that Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon were judges that ruled, you know, number of years and altogether it was 25 years or something, and that would tell us that information. But they're giving us this information about how many sons they have and daughters, how many sons and nephews, and, and, and that they ride these assholes, right? Why, why are you mentioning that, right? You understand what I'm saying in, in how somebody could look at this. But we can look at this and say, well, there's significance here because these numbers are important. But these numbers are really important when it comes to our history, the 7, 10, and 8 give us July 18, right? Well, I mean, that could apply. Somebody could say, well, you know, that's the 187 days uh, to the first day of the 10th or the 10th day of the seventh month, right? So from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month, it's a period that includes uh, 187 days. And so that there's some symbol here, right? Just even if they had nothing to do with our movement and they weren't applying it to our time, they could apply it in that way, that there's some kind of symbolism there. Um, and they could see the 30 as a symbol, represents a month, and they could see the 40 and the 3 as the 4 and the 3, um, this pattern that's common in the Bible to represent 70 or 7, and here it's 40 and 30, so that's going to be 3 score and 10. Um, but that the sons are riding, you know, these 70 ass colts, but you have these, well, not sons, but the, uh, the 40 sons and 30 nephews, right? So these 30 nephews would be obviously his, his brothers, uh, or maybe even his sister's children. I don't know how they define a nephew. And we also have um, the nephews. Uh, this is the word bane. 
it just means uh, a family relationship. So it can represent actually grandsons. Um, so it's it means lots of things, uh, not just nephews, but they put it here as nephews. So, so he had, it could be just 30 other relatives, right? 40 sons and he has 30 relatives or something. Now it's interesting, they double this word. So nephews is doubled. So what would be the significance of that? Second angel's message. Okay, so the second angel's message. Now, it, and it's kind of weird uh, uh, from my perspective to see um, now here in in um, Young's literal translation, he puts it as 30 grandsons, right? So 40 sons and 30 grandsons riding on 70 ass coals. And I kind of like the grandsons better. Um, but... Uh, So here, I'm just looking at the Hebrew, um, and it was, uh, so 40, 40 uh, benim, right? So that word is um, just the plural. And then uh, when it has beni benim, is the, what they're saying is that is sons, son of sons, literally. So, so I would think grandsons is probably better, and that would be why it's doubled, you know, from a, a grammatical point of view. So how are we going to understand this then in regard to our message? Uh, so maybe we should back up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go here. So what we have with this line is... a we put December 6, 2020 as the beginning of this line because there's a period of darkness that exists prior to December 6th or in connection with December 6th when the symbolic use of dates is rejected by this movement, by the organization of FFA, right? And, um, you know, they're going to basically dismantle the ministry. I mean, they're going to sell the school to profits. Uh, they're going to carry on with a few meetings for a little while, but then they just stop doing meetings altogether. Of course, they remove all kinds of videos from their YouTube page. Um, I'm never a fan of destroying books or videos or things like that, documentation, but they do that. Um, and then we, at this time, we have to address you know, what's going on. So we have this light that's coming to us, and this light is going to be in relation to time. So we're going to have this symbolic use of numbers still applying. Now, if we're going to talk about a formalization of this message, and we talked a little bit about this yesterday, I mean, we have different dates that could be placed there because we're going to have events. Um, now, when December 6th happened, we were studying um, Daniel 11, verse 1 to 4. So the movement knew we had this election in November. Whatever it was, I can't remember the date, November 3rd or something like that, uh, 2020. And, and, and Trump loses that election. Now, it's a little bit uncertain here at this point exactly what's going to happen if this election is going to be overturned. Um, there are people saying, um, if Trump loses, I'm out of the movement, right? Because July 18th failed and our Trump prediction failed. So obviously this movement was on the wrong track, right? So you're going to have people saying that. Um, but this is the last thing we have to left to hang on to, so, so to speak. It's the last, you know, they're going to hang on to the boards of the boat, uh, you know, Acts 27. Um, but 
you know, we know that the Trump prediction did not fail, that the problem that people were having both with July 18th and Trump was a misunderstanding of the lines. That is not understanding the internal nature of what we were going through, that we have to repeat Millerite history. And uh, this the issue dealing with uh, Daniel 11, verse 1 to 4, had to do with our lines, not with the huge history of, of the world. And, and that should be pretty obvious from the fact that this, even though the movement was in, to some extent worldwide prior to Parminder, that was dismantled. And so we ended up with the 300 Gideon, right? That's the way Jeff looked at it prior to July 18th. <clears throat> and, you know, the question is, did we lose that battle? If we're Gideon and we went in with our 300, uh, did we lose? And obviously we couldn't have, right? So there must have been a victory there. So we're going to see that that... Um, that, that victory is going to be there. We have Jotham. We have this all of this light that's given from November 9th to December 6th. Um, that is this particular aspect of chronology relating to the midst of the week, right? Or the week of Christ, which is going to give us this date, April 5th, uh, 2030. And it shows that, you know, God's leading this movement. We just don't fully understand uh, what it is, right? What it is that God is doing. You know, the dream uh, that uh, Gideon overhears. Um, we we haven't dealt into uh, we haven't delved into it in in a lot of detail, but we know it has to relate to the message uh, that we have, right? So this message that we have regarding time. Uh, still is in effect, but it's internal within this movement. It's a message that is meant to prepare us to understand Miller's rules and to know how to give a message to Adventists. So that's the role there. So, <clears throat> so when we look at December 6th and we see um, it's the 20th day of the ninth month. We're going to say that's the arrival of the first message in this Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon line. And that it's going, the first message is going to be represented by Ibzan. Now, it gives us some specific numbers, and this is the number 30. Now, the number 30, since there is three of them, we can, we can apply this to the story of Ezra, because we know there's going to be this period of divorcement set up for three months, right? Now, how we're going to, to understand that with Ibsen, now, we could take Ibsen as a line by itself, right? So but we're not going to do that at this point. We could take Elon as a line by himself and Abdon as a line. Be and we could actually take each of these waymarks, not just Ibsen, but even whatever waymark we decide uh, the first angel it is formalized in this line. We, we, we could look at that waymark and, and see a line in it. But, but we're not going to do that right now because we're going to try to, to figure out what this line is. Now, my suggestion was we're going to take this 20th day of the ninth month. And we're going to extend it. Yeah, so the contrasting meeting of Ibsen reflects the polarity of the movement, um, <clears throat> especially regarding uh, December 6, 2020, and its aftermath. Tripling of 30s in Judges 12, 9. Uh, and 12, 12 is 4 times 3. Uh, and 9... Uh, I don't know what that, that nine is. Three by three. Yeah, I know. I just wonder why ah. What that what that means? Nine ah uh, three times three. That's my quirky typing, Theodore. That's my quirky thoughts. Well, what is that? What does that ah uh, refer to? No, I just I just uh yeah because I 
I make a lot of errors when I type, and sometimes when I revise it, I don't always get all those errors. Oh, okay. I so, just thought it, it it's kind of cool that there's a 30 and a 30 and a 30 again. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so we have this 30, 30, 30, which we had before. And we know that if we take the 30, 30, 30, we take it as a number, we divide it, we get that number of uh, 5, 2, 5, 2, 5, 2, 5, or no, 2, 5, 2, 5, 2, point five, right? <clears throat> so we get the 252 and the 525, which is the 777. Um, yeah, so we have this tripling here of the 30. So that's 90 days, right? And, and so we can see that that relates from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month. If you just took it as prophetic months, and we've applied that already as spans of time. So we could connect these periods of time uh, to, um, to different dates, all uh, indicating this April 5th, 2030. So that these are witnessing to that date, but also witnessing back to July 18, 2020. So with Ibzan, we have uh, these 30s that are mentioned. But we know that that we have um, uh, December 6, 2020. So here with this way mark, with Ibsen, Ibsen is um, uh, it's number 78 in the Hebrews numbers. It's um, that's interesting. Um, I don't know if that really makes any sense, but uh, Ibsen is a, uh, it means, so we got different definitions here. So if I look at um, Ibsen in uh, the Strong's numbers, it says it means splendid. Um, but it's from the Hebrew word 76. So Ipsan is from uh, a word A'abua. So I'm not really sure how they even look. Oh, they don't look alike or anything. But I guess it's related to that. A'abua, which means blisters or boils from the root to swell up. Um, and how that relates to splendor. I have no idea. So sometimes it's a mystery to me how these uh, Hebrew words have relations to each other, even though they, I, I guess the only thing is they're the ab, right? So uh, in Ipsan, they change the, because aleph is just, um, uh, it's not even really truly a vowel. Uh, it has to have a vowel pointing for it to mean anything. But in Hebrew, it's aleph. Bet is uh, the first two letters, and then it's got a, a tzadi and then a nun at the end. So ipsan, so that it's just an ending there. Um, but how that relates, how a boil relates to splendor, I have no idea, and why they even make that connection. It just doesn't give me enough information. <clears throat> so we have sort of two different ways we can look at ipsan. They say it means splendor, but it also means a blister. Hmm. It also says a uh, meaning to belch forth. Yeah, belch forth, yeah. <laughs> So I have no idea how we would apply that symbol of Ibsen to this period of seven years of this judge. Um, but we do have, it's seven years. And um, so we got the seven, the 10 and the eight for each of these judges. So it's to note. Um, and the seven years represents, of course, 
uh, the symbol for the week of Christ as well. Now, uh, hmm. so, you know, so if, and we're looking at that. He had 30 sons and 30 daughters whom he sent abroad. Right. He took 30 daughters from abroad for his sons. So he's going to send, um, my understanding is the 30 daughters he sends out, and then he's going to take in 30 stepdaughters, right? Or not stepdaughters, daughters-in-law. <clears throat> so that's all we know about what he did. We know how many sons and daughters he had, 30 and 30. Now, you could look at this, of course, is 90, you could look at it as 120. Um, uh, uh, in the sense that uh, his 30 daughters obviously are going to have, at least I think, 30 husbands. That's what I think sent abroad would mean, that they're going to get married. But it only mentions 30, 30, 30, right? So we ha have this symbol, 30, 30, 30. And these sons and daughters, um, why, what would they represent, sons and daughters? How would we apply this to December 6, 2020? So we're looking at these as messages as well? Yeah, they, they're messages, yeah. Right. So these daughters are going to be sent abroad, right? And 30 daughters are going to come and replace them, right? They're going to be daughters-in-law. So he sends out his 30 daughters. He gets 30 daughters more because he had 30 sons. Well, we know that 12, 6, 620 helped to split the movement more. So, and that went viral, right, as they say. So people would leave or get just get dis disenchanted and maybe stay with the movement, but their hearts really aren't, aren't in it. And yeah. then they'd be replaced by people who come in who are wholehearted and really want the truth. Okay. Now, now of course, we have uh, messages here. So, I mean, we could apply it to people, I guess. Um, but the sending out of the 30 daughters is some kind of message. And then there is a return. Because we're trying to fulfill, uh, to, to figure out what this formalization and empowerment are. So we know that there's a period of darkness. And we know that these symbols are going to relate to... Um, formalization and an empowerment of the message. So we need to attach dates to these waymarks. And do we have enough information from Ibzan, Ibzan Elon, and Abdon to attach dates? Now, I suggested these, these dates because um, this structure is related to December 25th, 2021. And December 25th, 2021 was the 20th day of the ninth month. And so is December 6th, 2020. So they're both the 20th day of the ninth month. And so I put December 25th, 2021 as the center. And I'm saying that the beginning date, December 6th, even though it's not December 25th, it is the same date on the biblical calendar. And then with the next two, I said, well, December 25th, 2022 is the same date on our calendar. It's a different date on the biblical, but it's a significant one. It has to do with this divorcement. Right? Which starts on the first day of the 10th month. And we, we can see with this, if the divorcement starts on the first day of the 10th month, that one of the things we would we would do if, if we're going to extend this line, we would put the fourth way mark as April 5th, 2030, right? So we're not drawing them in right now, but 
it's something we're going to address in much more detail later on when we put all of these judges together in their whole structure, in the sort of the family tree, let's say, of this history of the judges, how these things line up and how they all point. Everything here is pointing to April 5th, 2030 in some way or another. That's what the period of the judges is witnessing to. And so we know that this light that's coming here would relate to the light that we're receiving presently. So December 6, 2020 represents a period of darkness, the end of a period of darkness, with an, a message that is involved in an increase of light that's going to unfold to this movement that's represented by these three judges that is the empowerment of the second angel on the judge's line. So that would be a fairly important uh, understanding here for this movement. Because if we're going to look at the empowerment of the second angel, that's the midnight cry. That's Exeter camp meeting. So um, you know, how do we take this, this line and, and say, in this line of the judges, which we have, we're going to say December 25th, 2021, is this midnight cry message. And in a sense, we're still in that time, right? Even though we've we've passed it um, to some degree, we're still in that time. I mean, January 11th, 2023 is going to be the arrival of the third angel. So, you know, we could say, well, we're, we're in the third angel already. But we know that that second angel still continues. All of the angels continue. So since December 25th, 2021, we're involved in the understanding of a message that we can call for this movement a midnight cry. And we haven't fully understood January 11th, 2023, um, but we know it points to April 5th, 2030. So this movement is presently involved in a history that parallels Millerite history. That is when we zoom into the second angel on, on the line that Jeff has, where the second angel is September 11th, we have this judge's line. And so we're in the time of the Sunday law. That's, that's what we're understanding. So we, we have to clearly be able to define what this waymark is, the December 25th, 2021 waymark. And we, be, we should be able to identify these waymarks, the formalization and the empowerment of the message based upon the symbols that are, is in these verses from Judges 12.8 uh, to Judges 12.15. So we have Ibzan, which names means uh, blisters or boils, but also splendor. So there's this contrasting aspect of his name. Um, he's from Bethlehem. He's from the house of bread. And the significance there is that this has to do with the word of God. So if we have a message that's from the house of bread that has this contrasting aspects, boils or blisters or splendor, and it's addressing a period of darkness, we still need to fully define what that period of darkness is. So prior to December 6th, from July 18th to December 6th, the movement was basically in disarray. It's trying to sort out why the disappointment happened. We have those who are studying diligently, searching through the scriptures, trying to find the reason. We have another group that is trying to distance itself. It's setting up a false um, uh well, I guess try I don't know what you would call their meetings that they had. They have these meetings. They're, they're they're disingenuous when it comes to the idea of 
examining the reasons for the disappointment. They already have a set uh, conclusion and they make a pretense of making an open examination, but they're just basically pushing through their idea that everything that we did was wrong and we need to admit it, apologize, whatever things they decide that we need to do. And um, they come up with this declaration on December 6, 2020. So all the symbols that are attached to that are pretty powerful. We saw in the story of Jephthah and we can see it here. Um, so that's going to be a message that's received. Some, some ways it's the message of Jephthah as well, right? So it's the message of the 70th week. But it is relating to a specific darkness. So that darkness is the confusion in this movement. So now we have this increase of knowledge. What's the increase of knowledge in this movement after December 6th that relates to that particular darkness? How would we define the message? And, and we can even look at just before that. So we're going to have Daniel Vanderhorst. We talked about my paper, right? So I have a paper that's written. And I, you know, that could be the formalization of the message. Um, but I write about December 4th, 5th, and 6th, the three days of which I'm going to relate to uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, periods of three days. Okay, so Iran says Ibsen equals 52, Elon 46, and Abdon 36. And, um, hmm. right, and then, so, um, so Ibsen times Abdon, times Abdon, so that's uh, equals 1872. So those are the sums. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. And so we can see that, of course, 36 times 52, we know is 1872. So we have July 18, 2020 symbolized there. Uh, the 46. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. So then the 46 there, we know what that means. So, so we have more symbols that we can attach to these. Um, so I'm going to put this in the diagram. I'm just going to put Ibsen equals 52. Elon equals 46. And Abdon equals 36. And we can know then, uh, I'm going to just do it this way. That's English gematria that we're talking about there. Um, all right, so we got that symbol for July 18, 2020. Now, another thing that I put in there that uh, we haven't talked about is from December 6, 2020 to December 25th, 2022 is 749 days. And it's, it's, it's uh, two years plus 19 days. Now, 749 
is 107 times 7. So you can divide it by 7. And of course, 107 is the symbol of the 10th day of the seventh month, which is the 187th day of the, of the Jewish year. So, so I thought that was significant, the span of time that we have. So from this 20th day of the ninth month in 2020 to the 10th, first day of the 10th month in 2022, we have this symbol that relates to our message. Um, now the 46 years with, with Elon, we're gonna see how, if that's the second angel's message arrives, it's also April 19th, 1844. And this would, uh, go into the 46 years, right? Because the uh, 45 years ends at when the 46 years begins, if you understand what I'm saying. In the 1290 and 1335, we have that um, 45 years separating the end of those two periods. But when we get to the first day of the first month, we're now past that period. Right, so we're in the 46th year. So we can see how that would make Elon being uh, the second angel's message arriving. Um, so we talked about the formalization the formalization would be an understanding of this message. Okay, so Elon, I think of one kilogram. It must be first Kings or something. First Kings 11. Okay. Yes, it's First Kings. I had to stop myself from laughing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the oak tree, because um, Elon means an oak tree. Right? I had a friend by that name. <laughs> yeah, and it means an oak tree, doesn't it? Elon? Yeah, he, he would go by the oak. He was very Jewish. Yeah, okay. Um. Okay, well, I mean, the oak tree has a lot of symbols uh, dealing with, of course, the covenants and, and all the, the what places it is in the Bible. So, but yeah, so we got Elon, December 25th. So the formalization of the message, we had talked about it, would be my paper. So in my papers, I had... Um, this paper on called Three Days, right? Addressing um, addressing uh, the official title of the paper: Three Days in Ezra and Nehemiah and the relation to events from December fourth to 6, twenty twenty. And that paper is going to be published on um, the twenty fourth, right? So of February, 20, February 24th, 2021. So, so we could put that date there. But the question is, how, how can we do that from the symbols? I mean, it's fine to say that we have uh, formalization date again. February 24th, 2021. So how, how do any of these symbols address that? Hmm. 
going to be 80 days after December 6th, 2020. Does that have any significance? 81 days inclusive. Is there anything about this date they can tie us to? Now, it is interesting. It's the 12th day of the 12th month. And on the Julian calendar, it's Stephen's birthday, February 11th. It's the 12th day of the seventh month on the Islamic calendar. So you noticed Stephen's birthday in there. Did Stephen publish anything in this time period that mm. might have significance? Not that I know of. Okay. But I'm just saying the formalization of the message is the understanding of December 6, 2020. Um, other than the 80 days being you know, also 81 um, and the symbol of 1212, so whether that's significant or not. I see that's a kind of a doubling, isn't it? Yeah. Which February 24th. 44. Is, yeah. Yeah. So February 24th is 12 plus 12. But, but I don't know. You know, I don't. I don't particularly know how to address it exactly. But I'm going to put that as a formalization. So. We had an increase of knowledge. I put it together in a paper. Um, and now we had other stuff that happened as well. We had, of course, in that period of time, we did have the January, we had December 25th and we had January 6th. Um, but we're leaving them out of this line in that this is specifically relating to um, these particular dates in December, the December 6th, a year later, December 25th, and a year after that. And so it has to do with what has happened in the movement. Now, if we're going to have an empowerment of this message, uh, now we already know, you know, the School of the Prophets has been sold as well. Um, so when we get to February 24th, 2021, uh, we would have to say, well, what's, what's going to follow that would be the empowerment of this message, of this first message? So there's a message that is empowered that needs to be accepted in order to accept the second message. So we have some event that had happened in this movement between February 24th, 21, and December 25th, 2021. Now, December 25th, 2021, we know there's Stephen 777 years from 457 to 321, the year in which the Sunday law occurs. There's the conflict that I have uh, when Colin is presenting. We know that we were uh, seeking to work together with uh, uh, the American and Canadian group for December 25th, 2021, but they didn't want to have anything to do with it. They, they didn't even really seem to want to acknowledge December 25th, 2021, that there was any significance now that our 777 structure was ending. So, you know, the movement should have come together on that date. Um, and instead, you know, conflicts were created. So, because whatever people they don't want to work together they have their own ideas so we don't really know there but we know prior to that uh, we did have another conflict so when was that conflict does anybody remember 
where was it? What happened? It's going to be in October of 2021. I can't remember the date, <laughs> but it's, yeah, go on. Well, I, I'm, there was, there's been a few conflicts. I mean, well, what I would consider conflicts. Um, well, I know of two, I mean, two that are significant. So the one is when I'm with the, the American group and um, uh, Mark Johnson is talking about uh all of the conspiracy theories regarding uh, transhumanism and the vaccine and so forth. And I challenge him on it because I say, well, you know, you're, you're not going to have your DNA changed. You know, right. You actually lost uh, your paper on, I mean, your uh, the video, didn't you? Lost the video? Was, well, I'm not lost. But they, didn't they take it down? Um, on that transhumanism comments? Um, what? I don't know if they, I don't think they put it up. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I have the video. Yeah, but once you put in um, YouTube jail for uh, a couple of days or a few, about a week, I think. Um, not on that video. No, I did get um, a video where I mentioned the this conflict, and that video put me into uh, yeah. It actually had me for a week. I couldn't upload, and that that expires on March twenty sixth. So, um, but that was a, that was a discussion we had actually with uh, Dwight, where I was mentioning that event but whatever that date is that's the next date <laughs> as far as i'm concerned because it um now why would i say that that's an empowerment of this message so i'm going to say that the conflict i have with the american group and it's going to be uh, daniel fontenot is is going to be saying i'm a judas um yeah, that was the one I was thinking about. Yeah, that's the that's the meeting. Yeah. Um, now there was tension already there, and I didn't know what was going on. So, I mean, I, I, I had a premonition that something was going on. I didn't know what it was, um, and uh, so I prayed about it before the meeting, and I know that. Um, and I saw this tension with Daniel Fontenot because I'd made some comment and he sort of attacked me. The comment I made had to do something to do with the Catholic Church. Um, I can't remember, but he was anyway, he was taking it that I was. Somehow insinuating that somehow the Catholics weren't the issue or something like that. I, I wasn't even really quite sure what he was attacking, but he, um, so I thought that was odd. And then we also had, then we had the conflict regarding uh, amalgamation of man and beast, right? And, and his view was that prior to the flood, that genetic engineering was going on where animals and people were combined. And I looked at Ellen White's statements on all of that, and Ellen White clearly shows that um, uh, when we're talking about al amalgamation, it's man with man and beast with beast, and that has nothing to do with genetic engineering. So it's, um, so amalgamation. Uh, so I know I have the paper on it, um, I have 
paper on amalgamation. Uh, and, and from that, I'm going to write a paper on uh, the, the DNA, the MRN, mRNA vaccine and transhumanism and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's going to be, I know it's October. Uh, must be October 9th or something, 2021. October 3rd. It's October. Yeah, so. so if we look at the date, I believe it's October 2nd, 2021. It must be. That must be the date. Uh, yeah, so it's October 2nd. So that's the date of the video. So we can put that in there. So we got October 2nd, 2021. Now, how is this an empowerment of this message? And how does this relate to Ibzan and all the things that we're saying about this message, the first message? I mean, it's a conflict in this movement. We're saying it's an empowerment of the first message. So we can see that this is about a conflict within the movement, right? This first message, it starts with December 6, 2020. There's a conflict in the movement. This conflict is continuing. But it's happening in a, a, a subversive way. That is, just like prior to December 6th, when we have this declaration made. Are things done in the open? No. no I don't not. think so. You know, it, it does remind me of Ibsen's name again. Excuse me for interrupting. I'm thinking, okay, you have a boil and it takes a while to reach your head and then it just festers right until it finally bursts. Okay. And this is forth. what's been going on in this okay. so, so this is what happens on October 7th. So there's an underlying... I mean, there's a lot of gossip going on. There's a lot of talking about things. There's jockeying for position. All those things are occurring. After FFA ends, um, there is a perception, and this has been told me, is that I was seeking to uh, basically put myself as the leader of the movement. Right? That's, that's what people believed. Yeah, they kind of talk themselves into that. Yeah, okay. So, which, of course, all I'm trying to do is work with everyone. That's all I've ever seen, Theodore. Yeah, because that's the only thing I'm interested in doing. So, but I know that there's lots of, there's lots of talk, right? And, and I heard some of this talk because I, I listened to what people said, you know, um, after the fight in the playground, um, you know, I have the recording of, of what people were saying about me. Right? So yeah. They were kind of PO'd about that. Yeah. So it, it's, it's not very good. It would be akin to what Ellen White overheard in vision regarding what people were saying about Jones and Wagner, right. After it, during the meetings in 1888, right. So these types of things should never happen. You should never have this sort of talk about others, right? If you have a problem with a brother, you go to him, right? Still, That's the law and yeah, the still, rules. This is not something that happens, right? I've gone to people. I've tried to talk to them on phone. I've talked to them on emails. Um, right away, I, I wrote uh, Brother Daniel uh, right after October 2nd. Uh, tried to talk to him, and, uh, you know, his emails are just accusatory, right? So there's not, there's not, um, 
he's not trying to understand where I was coming from or anything. So, you know, I put out all the verses, what Ellen White says about amalgamation and show that, that this is not amalgamation of, of man with beast. So she, she clearly defines what she means in other places. So you can put all of her statements together. And uh, Dwight saw those, and, and and you would agree with me on that, Dwight, right? Basically, what I put together. Very much. Yeah. So so it's quite clear. And and then trying to say, you know, so for me, I see a danger in, in these conspiracy theories, especially these ones that are highly emotionally charged, and, and the suggestion that somebody who's received the back vaccine now is no longer human. Um, that he's now transhuman. And of course, transhumanism, if you do a study on it, is not uh, anything like that. It's actually about man becoming almost like superhuman. Um, so nothing to do with, you know, our DNA being modified. Transhumanism is, is really about um, uh, um, biology and machinery coming together, you know, us having implants in our brains so we can have access to the internet through our thoughts and things like that, uh, all kinds of other things. And of course, it's all nonsense. You know, this idea humans are hackable and so forth. Um, it's a pretty juvenile uh, claims being made by uh, people in the World Economic Forum. They're just, they're not connected to reality. They're people who are, are you know, it's pretty much akin to believing in unicorns as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I see a danger, and I try to, in, in not an accusatory way or anything, to just challenge the idea, you know, that this is not something that's a part of our message, and, and Ellen White doesn't say that there was genetic engineering going on prior to the flood, right? I mean, I've heard these types of speculations, you know, as an Adventist, you know, my whole life as an Adventist, but I haven't seen the support for it in the spirit of prophecy. And for a while I did believe it, you know, it seemed to make sense until I started looking into her statements and, and, and took that as a stretch. But anyway, uh, we have this conflict. And, and so this conflict shows this division that exists within the movement that has been ongoing since December 6th. That is, as we've tried to resolve what happened, um, and I put forward a suggestion of what happened, um, that there still is the same spirit that had existed with FFA has still existed within this movement. That is, we're still troubled by this problem. So this comes to a head on October 2nd, 2021. However many days later that that is. Uh, yeah, so Ron put up a statement. It is hardly possible for men to offer greater insult to God than to despise and reject the instrumentalities he would use for their salvation. And, and we, we have to take that in every case. Every member that God has brought into this movement Everyone's important. All their opinions and, and things that God has shown them should never just be brushed aside. E even when they're not always said in the nicest way, we need to listen to people. And we need to seek to be restoring people, not cutting them off, not uh, writing them off, just because... They either differ or we don't like the personality or they're harsh or they're abrasive or whatever it is we think about a person's character. We have to remember that we are no better. So uh, a comment on that or an observation in my life mm -hmm. is that I've learned great things from the most terrible people that I knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <sighs> And often, I mean, I mean, we just don't know what's going on in a person's life. Let's put it that way. That's right. Because even our opinions about people and about their characters can be very far off. Because we don't know that person's experience, how they've learned to communicate, 
what mental uh, deficiencies they have. Um, you know, and I have a mental deficiency, right? So I, I, I can't always expect people to be completely patient with me, but there's definitely things I cannot do that I cannot perceive or understand no matter how hard I try. So um, now I've learned to compensate for that, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not everything to every person. There are people I cannot relate to. It's just a reality that I'm going to brush them the wrong way, no matter what I try to do. And it, and it could be something in them too, but that's not anything I can control. I can only control what's in me. So I seek to always do the best that I can, but it's not always enough, right? And so I have to be dependent upon God. But even in this situation, I'm seeking God because I know that something's afoot, right? I, I know that. You know, I almost didn't even want to go to the meeting, right? And now I know that probably that, you know, some of this stuff was going to come up, but I, and I tried to do it in the best way that I could, didn't come out right. I didn't say things the right way. Um, but, but it was what it was. So, you know, I apologized uh, on a number of occasions regarding, you know, what I said, you know, saying that his argument was nonsense. You know, it didn't make, it didn't apply to even what was being discussed about all of these other things he brought up had nothing to do with the topic. He just rattled off a bunch of stuff that he had read on some website. So how did that relate to the topic at hand? I had no idea because it didn't. So, so that's the empowerment of this message, this first message. So now in order to be benefited by this message. So this message is a message regarding the understanding of Miller's rules that conspiracy theories do not fit into Miller's rules. Taking the idea that, uh, you know, there was amalgamation between man and beast does not fit in with Miller's rules. Right? So no, now we're going to have... They're not. Right. And then we're going to have on December 25th, 2021, that when Colin presents his study, he's going to present a study on Miller's rules. So in, in his study of Daniel 2, uh, Daniel 11, verse 1 to 4, and Revelation 17, he's going to make an appeal to Miller's rules. And, and since he's making this appeal to Miller's rules, and he tries to argue that uh, the symbol that we have for Alexander, you know, this a king, which is not the king, it's a king, a mighty king, right? that he tries to continue to apply this to Trump as he did with Xerxes. I ask what the basis is of that is for. So first I ask, are you still accepting the pioneer understanding that that refers to Alexander, right? Now I wasn't there for the beginning and he assumed I was, so he thought I was being, um, I don't know what the word would for be, but just, um, I don't know, playing a game or something. I don't know exactly what he thought, how I would word that. But he didn't He didn't realize I hadn't heard him clarify that because he said that at the beginning. But I, I was wiped out from all these studies we were doing on Friday and early in the morning with the Spanish. I, I remember it generated yeah. from about that point on. Yeah, so, so I was just trying to ask him a question. I don't think I was belligerent or anything like that. But he just said he didn't want to answer the question. And then another brother stepped in and said, you know, I should stop talking and, you know, let, let him just do his study. And I'm saying, well, I need to know the answer to this question, right? So that ended up being that, that conflict. I don't think it was severe as the one on October 2nd, but still it was a conflict. And um, so then what we're going to have is... Uh, 
So this appeal to Miller's rules. So we have a second angel's message arrive there. Now, I, I recognize, the other thing I recognize is that Colin is correct in what he noticed. That is the image of Daniel chapter, it's cha chapter three, not chapter two, Daniel chapter three, where we have the golden image, which is the Sunday law. And we can see that that is all, uh, all one metal. Um, and his application is that, well, that means that all is Persia. So the mighty king is Persia. But my understanding of Miller's rules is you can't just do that. You can't just say, well, Alexander then is the same as Xerxes. But you, can say, but you can say that the United States is conquered by Greece, which would fit in with January 6th, 2021, right? So we right. can Correct. look at January 6th, 2021, and I can say we have a clear illustration of this problem that we had from December 6th, you know, trying to understand uh, the Trump situation. And what Colin presented is something to help us understand it more clearly. But instead of making the right application, he said, well, Trump has to be elect, you know, put as king again, right? But that's not what the, the passage would be saying. It would be saying that Greece is going to conquer Persia, but it's still Persia, right? In a sense, it's still Babylon all the way through, right? So the globalists conquered the United States. This, and this we still haven't understood all the implications of because we haven't spent the time studying this together. But we should have been able to see that this wasn't about Trump anymore. That Trump fulfilled his role. And now we have Greece. And Greece is in charge of the United States at the present time. I would agree. Right. So, so the globalists won on January 6, 2021. Now, I agree. And we can apply that as the Battle of Raffia, right? That is on this line, that whatever line we're going to put it on, it's not the midnight of the big line, of Jeff's line, where he has midnight, midnight, cry, Sunday law. That midnight is still future, in my estimation of it. But we have it typified within this movement, um, an application of it that we can now understand that Trump and uh, Ted Wilson, they serve their role in the way that we laid them out, but they're not part of the Sunday law that's coming, right? That Sunday law that we mark as the Sunday law, that Ellen White marks as the Sunday law, which is what we assume we're marking as the Sunday law. So when we say the Sunday law, we mean the Sunday law. Right. When we talk about the pandemic, it's a type of the Sunday law. So we can already see if the pandemic's a type of the Sunday law, then what happened with Trump was also a type of the Sunday, the Sunday law, what we had happening there. And we're going to see that that there is this uh, union of the United States with the Democrats. But we also had the Republicans involved because Trump is involved in that Sunday law, too. He's in that pandemic. Um, and still technically, um, uh, you know, for the time that that pandemic uh, begins, you know, Trump is Xerxes. So it happens in the time of Xerxes. And of course, the Sunday law happens in the type of time of Xerxes in type in the story of Esther, right? So we can take the story of Esther and we can say, well, that's a type of the Sunday law in that history of the decrees, but it's not the Sunday law. It's a type of the Sunday law. So we have to take that into account. But we know it's it's not the Sunday law, right? Because what happens in the story of Esther happens before the third decree. So, so it can't be, if we put it in that line of the decrees, it has to be something that happens in that history of the second decree not in the third degree, right? You understand what I'm saying? So, so here we have um, a second message arrive. 
Now, what we still haven't done is we still haven't said how the 40 and the, or, or pardon me, the 30, the 30, and the 30 apply particularly to uh, the message of Ibzan, Ibzan, right? So we haven't put the 30, 30 sons, 30 daughters, and the 30 um, daughter-in-laws. How do we fit them in as a symbol to, to this period of time, to the first message? Is there any way that we can we can deal with that? Okay, so how would it be if we said that it's 300 days from December 6, 2020 to October 2nd, uh, 2021? Does that help us at all? So if we put I'm in sorry, the stack time. Dates again. Okay, so all we're going to do is we know it's going to be um, uh, from December 6th, it's going to be 80 days here, okay, to February 24th, to the formalization. And then it's going to be 220 days here. But we're also going to have we're also going to have three hundred days, right? Because you can do math, right? Yes. So this is three hundred days. From here to here. Does thirty relate to three hundred? Yes. They're threes. Okay, right. So we know, and, and we've already applied the 300 in the story of Gideon. We apply it to the th flood. Do we have, um, we have the two 150s in the flood. We also have a two a 20 in the flood, right? So th does that, does that explain the 30, 30, 30 to some degree? Yes, to some degree. So three thirties and three hundreds, can they relate to each other? They should be able to. Okay. Um, just using the, the three as a symbol, I would say yes. Okay. Okay, so, so we have that. So now we can say that we've taken that symbol and we've applied it. We know it also refers to the 777 because the 30, 30, 30 divided, right? So we've already made that application. It connects us to the story of the flood. So, so we shouldn't have any trouble with that. So now we go to Elon. Now, Elon doesn't give us as much information. Uh, we know he's a Zebulonite. So he's of the tribe of Zebulon. He's buried in Agilon. And he also judges Israel for 10 years. So what do we do with this symbol? Uh, I'm getting Zebulon means habitation. Yeah, habitation. Yeah. And then um, wait, Agilon. 
Now we know it's in 1212 that you're going to have um, his um, death. And we have Agilin, which means a field of deer. Not just a deer, but a male deer, it seems as though a stag. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if that means anything. Okay. Now, is there anything symbolically relevant to the division in the between the arrival and the empowerment on the first angel's message of the 80 and the 220 um so the 80 and the 220 with the 300 days 220 agreed. is a restoration agreed um what are you suggesting well i'm just <clears throat> i'm looking at these two Just, just trying to consider the mathematical situation that's that's all involved with this. Yeah. Well, and, you know, another thing too is um, uh, the paper was actually originally written. I started it on February twentieth, and then I published it on February twenty fourth. Right. Right. Um, so 220 represents February 20th. Agreed. Right. Which is interesting. And, and of course, if I if I counted the number of days from when I started it, it'd be 224 days, which would be the day that I published it. Right. So so that all fits together there. Um And from December 6th to February 20, 20th is seven, 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 or 77 inclusive days. So there's lots of symbolism there just in these spans of time. And remember, we I didn't know these dates. I didn't know the October 2nd date until we just looked it up, right? So now we have this 300, the 220, the 80 and all the symbols that are attached to them. A anything else you're suggesting there, Dwight? No, I'm just, I'm looking at this because the 80, the 220 and the 300. Yeah. Would all, They would be divisible by four and by five, as well as by 10. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just trying to puzzle that out to see if there's anything that, that I would see as being relevant here. The 220 is definitely a huge symbol. As is 300. <coughs> Agreed. Yeah. So... So there we have those symbols. And so, I, I mean, it's pretty clear that, that this is correct because of the witness of the symbols, because we get the dates first and then we analyze the symbols attached to them. And we can see that they relate to um, Ibsen. Now with Elon, we have his name, the Gematria is 46. There's 10 years. Um, 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 
I'm just looking up something here. I'm sorry, the screen's blank. It's just because I went to this other program. Um, so, I'm just looking up the gematria of Elon in Hebrew, it's 87, so I don't know if that relates to anything. Well, part of the reason why I was looking at that with the, with the 220, mm -hmm. I was asked a question the other day regarding Revelation 2117. Okay. And... As this, as this conversation was going together, the, the question that I, and that's a good point, Angela, about today's date being, being a, a mirror. <clears throat> as, the, as the question went together, I was looking back at Revelation 21, 16, where it states that the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And the, he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Now, if you relate furlongs to yards, what do you come out with? So if you're saying you have 12,000 yards, or what are you saying? How many yards is in there? Well, I don't know how long a furlong is. Okay. A furlong is 220 yards. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So it's 220 yards, and there's 12,000 times 220. Right. Which is 2640000. Zero, 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 zero. So, right. The 264, 26th day of the fourth month. Okay, that was a good point, Ron, too. Okay. But in this in in this situation, as we have been accepting this, this 220 is a symbol of restoration. Mm -hmm. We're finding this symbol is running through the Bible, whether we're dealing in Genesis, whether we're dealing here in Judges, or whether we're dealing in Revelation. Mm -hmm. But the the symbol that I have I've looked at with 220 the most has had to do with the 1843 chart. Because without the 220. We will we would not have a starting date for the twenty three hundred. Yeah, so it's from six seventy seven to four fifty seven. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that's here symbolically mm -hmm. in this line with Ibsen, Elon, and and Abdon. Yeah. Yeah. Now um, it's interesting. Because we have this 749 days, so just relating to what we're talking about here. So we have 749 days. And if I am going to count from December 6, 2020, um, 107 days, it's going to bring me to March 23rd, 2021. That's two years ago. Right. So today's March or March 23rd, 2021. Today's March 23rd, 2023. Yeah, it's my son Jonathan's 30th birthday today. So he's <clears throat> born March 23rd. Um, but that 223 symbol we've we've seen before. I know Iran knows about it a bit. March 23rd. 
Yeah, I that's can't uh, the complement to 777. Right. So, so if you take a thousand, right, and you take 223 and you add it, you subtract it, you get 777. Is that right? Or 233. How does that work? Um, no, three, 323. No, it's two. <laughs> it's 223. Yeah, 223 uh, minus 777 because it's 223. Yeah, there we go. Um, now, uh, Ron mentioned a complement 46 and 64 gives us 100 or something like that. But I don't know. 110. If 110, that's it, right? 110, there it is, 46. So 110, just half of 220, um, whether we're going to apply that here or not. But anyway, we can see that these symbols uh, that we have all witness to these lines. Now, we still have to deal with Elon, but we're not going to have time to do that today. And then, of course, Abdon, even though it's just one way mark, um, Abdin, of course, relates to uh, other dates, right? So um, Abdin, we would um, we can see that it's going to witness to not just December 25th, 2022, the first day of the 10th month, but it's going to witness to um, other dates that we already have in the future, April 5th, 2030, and things like that. Um, but it also witnesses to July 18th, 2022, when you take it in context of this whole line. So the 36 also relates to the 666, which is the Sunday law, which is what we say December 25th represents. Um, I know it's December 25th, 2022, as 40th uh, anniversary of my baptism. Um, now we also have the eight years there, which is a symbol of resurrection. Um, so lots of different things involved in these these lines, but but you can see now we're we're having a much easier time constructing lines and analyzing them. So we're we're when we started understanding the lines, we definitely weren't in the position that we are today as far as understanding the lines, right? I agree. So anyway, we're going to have to close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning and for the light that you are giving us. Help us to follow and serve you. Continue to lead us and guide us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.